Okay, uh, ordinances. Uh, Mr. Clerk, I have a way. We have ordinance. Uh, proposed amendment to the 2013 budget assistant uh, police commissioner positions. Uh, this was uh, discussed by the city council in, in executive session last week. Um, city manager, uh, anything you want to say uh, with regard to uh, this item before we, uh, we act on it? And Police Commissioner Carroll? Yeah, I'll just give a brief overview and then open up for questions. Back in August, the police commissioner uh, proposed reorganization of the police department. We uh, had several steps along the way to put this into place. Uh, one would be to have the Civil Service Commission uh, create the positions that were being uh, recommended. That was done in October. Uh, we uh, have to, uh, this, this step, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kathleen, this step is sort of the first step in a multi-step process of which uh, the city doesn't uh, make the ultimate decision. It's made at the state level. Um, there would be three steps along the way there. This, though, does have to, this, what you'd be doing tonight would be simply establishing the positions in our budget for 2013. If the council decides to do that, uh, then we would be before the Public Employee Relations Board to uh, have them consider our petition. Um, the package included the city's independent uh, outside uh, labor attorneys, uh, make sure I know what he calls it, what we call it, uh, a rider to our application. Uh, in support of the fact that the positions, in our view, are management confidential positions and therefore should not be in the collective bargaining unit. Uh, the issue of, uh, of retirement to plan uh, is not ours to decide. It's decided by the state retirement system, not the city, much despite all the stuff that's been disputed about. And uh, in a third sense, uh, if they were to be considered exempt positions, that would have to be done by the State Civil Service Commission. That could not be done by the city. So uh, even if the city council were to put uh, this resolution, adopt it, put it in the budget, uh, PERB, which is the right body to determine whether it's a management and confidential position, would then have to consider that application. Uh, if the city wins, then we win. If we lose, we lose. And the positions would either uh, be called what they're called and stay in the union, or we could call them whatever we want and they'd stay in the union. But that's an issue for the uh, her body to determine, uh, and that's why we are submitting an application for it. Um, the other stuff would happen after that. So this is uh, just the first step in a in a process that the council has been uh, exposed to since August. When the police commissioner made an initial presentation, and uh, I don't want to add anything to that, Pat. But that's, that's no, where I, it is. We actually were considering this over five years ago. This isn't something new. Uh, we discussed this way back when, uh, the idea of taking the captains out of the union because of their positions. There's, there's really, there's only three spots up there. Three captains running three different, very critical uh, units in the department. And if that person is in that position, there's no way to remove them short of uh, major disciplinary charges. There's no flexibility, there's no movement at all. So again, we discussed that with the civil service and uh, personnel many years ago, and we come to this point now to try and make it happen. Assuming that the state acts in the way that you recommend, would there be any cost implications for the city? Well, the first action for the state would be the PERB action. There would be no cost implications involved in that. Uh, the second action would be retirement uh, uh, system. And uh, uh, again, that's a state retirement decision. If it were to be, if there were to be a removal from one retirement system to another, although it might be a benefit to the position, whoever's in it, the city's cost would be less because the police pension is 26% of payroll, the ERS is 20%. What does ERS stand for? Employee retirement system. Okay. Uh, so there would be a savings on city cost alone and, and retirement. Uh, uh, but again, that's not our determination to make. That's a determination that would be made by the state retirement system. And, and your, your primary motivation is improving managerial oversight and accountability, as you said. That's you correct, say. yes. Um, questions or comments from council? Okay, I saw council member Rice yeah. and council member Tarantino. Yeah. Um, in terms of precedent, um, is there any precedent within New Rochelle, maybe within the police department or the fire department or anything, 
that of removing positions from the union. Mm -hmm. There's precedent in other departments. I just don't have it off the top of my head. There is also precedent of uh, the unions decertif a group, certain employees in a union decertifying and forming their own union. That's what happened with the deputy fire chiefs. Similar situation. Um, I can't remember. We, we've, we've, we've moved positions in and out of unions before on several occasions. Uh, in fact, we, we did it this year in the CSEA. We did it with, uh, with a couple of positions uh, in the uh, MIS department. So it, I don't know that there's there were, there were deputy, uh, I don't know if they were in the union. They, they created the deputy commissioners way back before I got here. Yeah. And um, with the idea of getting more accountability, they put three deputy commissioners in and reduced some captains and rank. I think the key, the key thing to focus on is what was put in there in the rider about it being a management and confidential position. And in the end, those positions who are overseeing and supervising people within their same union. Uh, PERB will make the determination. Perhaps we're wrong, but I don't think so. Uh, I think we'd win. Uh, I think the SOA probably disagrees, but that's okay. That's the uh, appropriate body to uh, mount the challenge with. Uh, PERB is the uh, regulator of uh, MNC positions. And um, in terms of decertifying an SOA, um, the captains, three captains are part of the SOA, is it an alternative for them to create their own union, which would kind of take them out of that and, and allow that disciplinary process to run more smoothly? I imagine they could. They could if they wanted to. They, they, could, they could. could try that. I'm not sure it would be our choice, but that is certainly something they could try, as but I said. I think, I'm not sure it was before my time, but I believe <coughs> that's what happened with the deputy fire chiefs. Yeah. But part of the package here that, you know, we're hoping to get the whole package, but the whole package would be the fact that they would not have to take an exam. I mean, if they're in the union and they're still doing it, and the, we may not get that, but we're not sure. Yeah, I think because that is going to be the toughest yeah. uh, thing. So it's very possible that they, the positions would remain competitive and that there would be a test and that uh, we'd have to follow civil service regulations. Again, that's not a decision we'll make. That'll be a decision made by the State Civil Service Commission. And um, there's been a lot of talk with respect to retirement age, and that's something that I'm not really clear on right now. I know I've heard 62, 65, 70. Is, could anybody provide any clarity on how Maybe. retirement age works? Or is that I, I, I something can, that we shouldn't I, I'm not a lawyer, so uh -huh. I, I can only tell you what the lawyers told me. Yeah. Uh, the 62 in the city charter is to take it directly from a section on the local police pension fund. It doesn't exist anymore. There's nobody in the local police pension fund. There may be some people still receiving benefits, but uh, there's no active members in the local. That's before. Uh, the, state, uh, uh, the state retirement system uh, would determine uh, if there's a mandatory retirement age. My understanding is that uh, there is there's a, so many different plans that, that something that reaches a retirement age could switch to other plan, which moves them up to 65. We could get clarification on that. I could bring in the labor attorney, but it's my understanding that uh, there is no mandatory retirement age. 70, I believe. No. Well, uh, not 62. No, not 62. Yeah, and lastly, um, I have been speaking with a lot of different people about this issue the last 72 hours, and um, there is a lot of opposition to this, and um, I just don't know, me personally, I'll be honest, I don't know if today is the time to actually move on this and that's just my gut feeling there's, there's two sides to this and I don't know if I quite understand the other side as well and I'll be well, I don't want to speak for the other side yeah. um, I think the, the papers that were provided to council are clear uh, I think they clearly demonstrate that the role of these positions are management confidential positions uh, ultimately that's not council's decision to make but if the council chooses not to let the police department reorganize, the police management to reorganize in the method that they see best, I guess that's the council's choice. I'm not sure it's where we ought to go. PERB will decide whether we're right or wrong. Uh, but I believe that's the appropriate uh, forum for this to be to be heard. And so Council Member Tarantino, then Council Member Yeah. Um, the question I have is that with the existing system that we have in place right now, 
How, in your estimation, has it worked well, or has it been a problem? Uh, no, it has, it has worked pretty well. Um, I've been here almost 20 years, and I've had pretty much the same three captains for 20 years, except for one promotion in there. That sort of tells you the possibilities that it may not work well. I was very fortunate to have three good captains. What happens if you have two that don't work with you? Take, for example, a new police commissioner comes in, and you have, say, two out of three captains that don't want to go along with the policies. That, you know, you're trying to implement new things. You're trying to put in drug testing or educational values and stuff like that, and, and they fight you tooth and nail. Um, you can be up against a, a, a real tough battle uh, because there's really not much you can do. They're not on your team, in other words. But it's with the same token, we can have a police commissioner come in that isn't the right police and commissioner. And you get rid of me. It, right, exactly. Yeah. Serves but, my pleasure. Right, yeah. but, but the point, is, you know, the other question I have is that, you know, is, is there an example that you can give me where uh, this, this change, this change that's being presented right now, um, uh, would make it easier or not, excuse me, start to handcuff you in trying to uh, discipline somebody. There are mechanisms in place to, to allow you to do that already, correct? No, it's not, it's not an issue with discipline. No. Well, you said earlier about, you know, being able to... Well, this the, captains, the captains? Yeah, even the captains to discipline, uh, you know, even though they're in the same union, they're, they're in a position uh, in the past to discipline um, subordinates. Uh, have there been times when they've had to discipline subordinates and they weren't able to because of this position? No. They, oh, well, they, I think it puts them in a terrible position. It, 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 uh, yeah. they, they do command discipline to these uh, people that work for them, and they're in the same union as them. It puts the no, I know, supervisor... But you know, look, look, I, what I, I'm I hearing is a lot of assumptions, but I'm not hearing any fact, and that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to find uh, an issue that has come up where this becomes necessary. I'm just trying to figure that out. That's, well, that's let, me, what let, me put, let me put it as clearly as I can, think I can put it. Your management team believes this is the right organization mm -hmm. for the police department. Uh, we believe that the captain positions, assistant police commissioner positions, are management confidential positions. Okay? Right. The council can agree, disagree with that. You're free to vote however you want. Ultimately, I can tell you that it is my strong belief, based on the conversation I've had with our legal advisors, that if we do this and give the police management team the management capacity that they believe that they need, uh, PERB will rule in our favor. I could be wrong. Okay. I, could, I could be wrong, and PERB could say, no, they're not management confidential, they should stay in the union, and that's it, and then it's done. Uh, things change, uh, and this is, the, look, it's our recommendation. Right. No, I understand. I was just trying to understand if there was an example of uh, issues that have come up in the past that would uh, make this, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I can tell you, this to be done I can tell you this has been a discussion. You know, assumptions since I've been the manager. Right. This has been okay. Well, I, okay. I've had a lot of experience with that in New York City. Mm -hmm. And those that uh, didn't match up, that got a command, got bounced out of the command. The career was over. The police commissioner has the authority to give you a command and move you up the ranks, and, and he has a lot of latitude. And when you don't perform in that command, you're out. And you're a duty captain for the rest of your life unless you retire. So your career is pretty much over once you lose your command like that. Uh, I have no flexibility like that. If, if I have a person that's in the spot and really can't fit that spot, doesn't know how to deal with people, doesn't know how to deal with the managerial principles you want to do, you're stuck with them. Okay? They take an exam that's a little more than the lieutenant's exam. It doesn't, and it's, it's a lot of memorization. It doesn't show you the aptitude of the person. Is that person able to run an organization? Can a person manage, supervise, discipline, come up with ideas, make the agency grow? That's what you're looking for. You don't get that from a civil service exam. By the way, it was our original intent to have PERB decide this first for us. But PERB has advised our legal uh, counsel that this step has to be taken before they will hear the petition. So, okay. That's, is that correct, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Councilor Rackman? 
Um, first of all, it's my understanding that there was a time when our captains were deputy commissioners, and that was, I think it was, it was a number of years ago, but I think it was for about three or four years, and then it was reversed because it was not very effective. Um, my other issue is, if I'm reading the city charter correctly, the deputy, the city manager has the ability to create the deputy commissioner position. It then says any changes to the organization of the police department need to be done by the city council, not by PERB, not by the police commissioner, but by the city council. And I don't know that this is necessarily an issue that goes to PERB. Oh, it's clearly no. It clearly to has to go to PERB. Yes, I understand that, but I think after the council <laughs> approves the reorganization, not well, that's prior why, to that. That's why well, this, this is a budget system. here. This is this is a budget. The this civil is, service. That's, that's the action that's, that's required the action by the council. Required. Civil service commission has created the position. City council has to fund the position. That's why it's, that's why it's here. Um, I'm, could I just ask for a response to Councilmember Rackman's point about this? Um, structure having been implemented previously is that precedes, correct? It precedes both Pat and I. It, it precedes the the only thing I got out of it there were when the uh, new police commissioner came in he had six captains I believe and a lot of dead wood and he wanted to get rid of dead wood so he created the position of uh, deputy commissioner uh, and put three of the captains he wanted into those positions and and tried to force some of the others out. I think what it indicates is there was a organizational structure in place the commissioner came in and recommended that the organizational structure change, and he was allowed to do it, and then another commissioner came in and wanted to change it back, and he was allowed to do it. I think that's the history. Is that, uh, is that in fact, what happened? I, I believe know, I can find out. But I, I believe they went from three deputy commissioners to one deputy commissioner and captains. Mm -hmm. But they lost, in the, in, the, in the total, they had six captains at one point. Now we have three. Do you have can more I just on have that? one more question? Sure. Um, if you arrest someone at this point, do you arrest them as a police officer or do you arrest them as a citizen? A uh, police officer. You do. Okay. Uh, Council Member Fertel. Yeah, a couple of questions. You know, one of the things that I find kind of ironic about this discussion, when I was on the school board, one of the problems was the senior management staff had tenure and you couldn't <coughs> remove them because they were guaranteed uh, their jobs until they could remove, for instance, for instance I would say, principals of schools. And what you're proposing, as I understand it, is to basically eliminate the can amount of tenure as civil service protection. Is that really? That, that's that, correct. And I guess my question is this. Uh, my I have two questions. One is, what is the net, 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 net bottom line effect on our budget if we approve this? Is it going to cost the citizen taxpayers more? Is it going to cost them less? It will have a, no effect? I'd like to hear what you're approving tonight. If we approve it tonight, it goes There's through. no budgetary impact. None whatsoever. But that's you said we pay a little bit less for retirement benefits. That's if the retirement system decides to switch the So in the absence of a change in retirement system, there will be absolutely no budgetary impact. Well, going forward, it would probably be a uh, savings in that non-represented positions are generally uh, given increases less than uniform services. So probably would have a uh, an overall reduction in costs, minimal at best. I don't know what's going to happen. This group that doesn't has had a contract for three or four years, so I don't know what's going to happen there. Right. But in those three those three of those years, the non-reps got zeros. All right. now, those three employees. people will not have overtime as well. My, my next question is... I just want to be clear. Right. I want to be clear because your question is, their compensation package right now gives them a salary plus overtime plus some other things. What is it? Uh, Holiday, holiday pay, staff, staff, staff differential. Whatever the total remuneration package would, is now is what it would be. It would just all be in the salary. Same so as far as they're concerned, their their compensation would not change at all. As of now. And what do you mean? I, I want I want to get this clear. I mean, as of now. I mean, because other than, eventually. Other than let me finish. Other than negotiated changes and or increases that are passed along to them, based upon negotiations with unions or 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 otherwise, if. Nothing changes. If it's status quo now and four years from now, let's say hypothetically, would these individuals get paid the same, less or more, than they would be paid now? Here's, here's the reason it's difficult to answer. And Kathleen would have to correct me if I'm wrong. Because the SOA has not had a contract with the city since 2009, I believe is the time, these positions served these 
employees, if they're still here, whenever those things get settled, serve. They're entitled to those. I, I, I understand that. I'm so, saying. I'm saying, assuming that nobody ever gets any increase ever in their future employment pay. Just assume that. Would they, by virtue of this position, receive additional compensation? No. Now, I, there's a good chance they'll end up getting less eventually over four years because, as the city manager said, if the uh, union got a 3% raise, there's a good chance the uh, non-refs would get I, two. I understand. I'm just trying to talk from a position yeah. point of view, not no, from a it's pretty much the contract same. point of view, yeah. whether they would get an automatic increase or any other longevity or seniority well, increase. As, as, as non-refs, they're entitled to none of that. I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My next question, which is a more difficult question for you, Commissioner. Uh, there's a great number of gentlemen sitting in the back, as you probably know, breathing down your neck right now, talking about who feel very strongly about this. And I've been contacted, and we've been bought, been bought by emails. And I'd like you, I know, I know it's not fair, but can you tell us, if you can, why there is such adamant opposition to this and what your response to that is? Uh, I don't know. All I know is if, if I were in the back, I know I would be one of the guys going to be a star trying to get that position if it came up. If I was a lieutenant, for example, and uh, there was a, a deputy uh, commissioner or assistant commissioner spot up, I'd be the guy trying to shine to get it. If I wanted it. Maybe I don't want it. Um, in other words, you're auditioning in that rank now. Sergeants, lieutenants are auditioning for those future spots. And uh, they're showing the management, uh, I'm a team player, I'm the guy you want on the team, I can do the job. And that's what you're looking for someone to carry the ball and uh, I would I would almost say thank God I don't have to memorize all that crap anymore I don't have to study let me add to what he said back before I proposed this he's here I met with the president of the SRI I gave him the courtesy of calling him to my office and I said this is how we're looking to move forward we believe it will be handled at the per level at some point in time I know they're going to oppose it. The SOA has a right to oppose it. They're, after all, they're losing three positions in their unit. I would be surprised if they didn't oppose it. Uh, I won't comment on some of the, uh, the uh, attacks that have been thrown around and the misinformation that has been spewed, but I will tell you that they have every right to oppose it. They'll have a right to oppose it. If you do it, they can go to PERB and oppose it. They already have. They've already submitted. Their attorneys have already submitted papers to PERB. So it's really, it, it, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's the management staff of the city saying this is what we think is best for the organization. Either you're going to agree with our recommendation or you don't. Ultimately, that's the question. All right, just a few more questions. One other thing I'd like to add, and I think that would create more movement in the ranks as opposed to what's going on now because captains now, in order to, to realize anything, have to stay to age 62. Yeah, I, I want to get into that a little bit because yeah. there's been a lot of misinformation thrown around about how this will have people. As it stands now, if you're in the police retirement system. When you work 20 years, your pension is capped until you get to 62, and then it goes up a little bit each year after that. That does not, in my opinion, give people a real incentive to stay with the organization because you could start as a police officer at 25 and you could move your way through the ranks and at 45 your pension's capped. You've got to stay 17 years if you want to stay with us, become a captain and get a pension benefit. The ERS system is different in that you get 2% a year. There's no 50% cap. So in my opinion, it's what it is, that that is much more of an incentive to have people stay with the organization than to do 20 and out and be gone and to have to keep bringing people up through the organization. That, that, this idea that uh, this is going to allow somebody to stay here until they're 85 years old, in my opinion, uh, the folks that are, uh, and I don't want to make this too personal because that's another uh, bit of misinformation that's been thrown around, are much more likely to retire earlier if this happens than later. Oh, just a couple, one more point. Well, one more point. As I understand this, this is not an all or nothing. It's almost a menu. You have one issue is the elimination of the position from uh, from the from to becomes a management confidential, and they still have to take a test. That's one possibility. That's a possibility. Yes. The other possibility is they don't go into the ERS and they stay in the police retirement, right? That's a possibility. So you can have several permutations. One is the minimum you would 
have to get in order for this to succeed is to take them out of that, uh, make a management confidential, but they still have to take the civil service exam. Right. That's, that's the minimum you would be asking for. Am I correct? That's correct, but remember, we're not eliminating captains. They would just stay in here unfunded. Okay. They'd have to go back. Second, the second, if you got even more, would be that you would, and two or three of the same, you would also uh, have them not required to take the civil service exam. Right. <laughs> and then they would serve at the, the, uh, the will. On the well, let me ask if they took the civil service exam, would they still serve at the option of the commissioner? No. No. So no, we have I, to take the one in three rule would, would apply, would be but they could still be removed at the will of the commissioner. No. No. Oh no! So, the, so, so, what you're saying is, that at a minimum, you would still have them in positions where they'd be guaranteed, basically, due process before you could remove them. Right. The second level, which would be a little higher, is that that would be limited, and you could remove them without having to go through the civil service process. Right. And the third aspect of this is whether or not they would be subject to the police retirement or the employment retirement system. That's correct. Those That's are the three factors that we're dealing with here. Yes. To make it clear to the public and to everybody who's sitting here. And so we're making a decision of this menu in various gradations to what extent. You can get that. And the minimum is the change in the position of the management confidential where they would be out of the union but still have the civil service protection and could still be police retirement system. Right. Well, all you're doing tonight okay. is allowing us to follow through with PERB to see if we're right in our position or not. Right. And at the end of the day, I will be honest uh, and upfront, the least, the most difficult thing of the three things to, uh, we're trying to get would be the exempt position. That would probably be the most difficult thing to right. have. One more question, sorry. Are you requesting that they be changed in the retirement system, or that's something that would be decided unilaterally or by the commission, at, by PERB itself? Is that something you're requesting, or that's no, something that would be we, we, answered? The employees in the city would have to make that request. Okay, so the employee who gets promoted or this position, would they have to request whether they're in that particular retirement the system? The city would have to make the request with them. Right, okay. Nothing further. Thank you. Okay. I had just one quick question before I forget it. Um, based upon what Councilman Fertel said, um, if it got, if this was approved by Council, Council then has no more involvement in the process that's done administratively from that point on, or would it have to come back to Council uh, to determine if, if PERB gave you everything you wanted? and allowed you to make them move into the other pension system, uh, eliminated the testing, would council still have say in any of that process, or would it be done administratively? In other words, is this the last line for the council? Okay. That's, 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 that's this what I'm trying to understand. This is a policy question. Okay. The rest okay. of it is administrative. Okay. It's not that's, policy. Okay. okay. Very good. That's that's very good. Commissioner, um, you presented, I think, two concerns that you felt was important to you. One was the fact that the captains were in a union with the union employees, their subordinates. Right. And you said that that could be an issue regarding if there were disciplinary action brought against subordinates. But how many times since that, has that happened since you've been on as a commissioner? Has it I was anticipating that against, question. I was anticipating that question. Quite often. <laughs> since 2004, there have been 54 cases of command discipline where a captain has brought command discipline to a uh, a uh, yeah, lieutenant or a sergeant, okay. resulting in 47 days lost leave. Whether now, when command discipline's brought, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not up to the employee whether they want to challenge that and seek a hearing and, and go in that regard. But the captains initiate that command discipline. Okay. The the other one, the other concern, the major concern you had was the fact that you want to be able to pick or select individuals not from testing, but from what you felt would be the best. Uh, right. Now, if we go through third, that might be a moot point, because if you have to take it, if they have to right. take a test, you still got to pick from that list, I correct? Still do. That's correct. If PERB decides that we don't have to go through testing, uh, then you can make civil service, state civil service commission makes that determination. All right, then you can pick who you want as being your, right. your officer. Question is, though, uh, will you be required to always pick from the New Rochelle Police Department. Can you go outside the department? Can you go outside the city and pick somebody for your deputy commissioner? Probably technically, but it, it, it's not what Never you're happened. looking to do because you're looking for people to know the organization already and uh, have uh, shown it. You know? but, but technically, I mean, if you're not here as a commissioner, we have a new commissioner, yeah. he can go outside the, 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 the staff or, or outside the city. Yeah, but it, it would uh, defeat the whole purpose of what we're trying to do. Uh, let me, maybe I can give you one good example. When my friend took over the Philadelphia Police Department, they wanted him to come in and make a lot of change. He came in, he could only 
Pick one person from that whole organization. Now, here's what, the fourth or the fifth largest police department in the country. Everyone was civil service up to the top second person. He couldn't make any change. After almost two years, he packed it in frustrated because he had to deal with an organization that was against change, didn't want to do anything, and he couldn't do anything about it. He couldn't remove anyone, couldn't move anyone. He was locked in. Uh, and um, this organization here, I'm doing it for the best of the organization, for the future growth of the organization, because uh, policing and over the last 20 years has become so much, so complex, so involved with new technologies and things like that. You need thinkers. You need people that are going to move the organization and not just sit there and get a paycheck. All right? I mean, at the end of the day, police captains are some of the highest compensated senior management positions we have in the organization. There's no doubt about that. All you got to do is read the job spec, whether it's police captain, assistant police commissioner. Uh, you know, I I don't see the big controversy other than the union not wanting to lose the three jobs, and that's what it's really about. Well, so, Councilor Rack and then Councilor. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't realize no, you. Done. Okay. Councilor Rack? No? I thought you raised your hand. All right. Councilor, I'll forget. Yeah, one Councilor question, because I, I don't understand this. If, if under that menu, the only thing that we get, or you get, is the fact that they have become management confidential, but they still have to take the test, um, other than the fact that they're removed from the union, is there any other change? Well, it depends if they go into, in the, a union, if they go into the civilian union. That would be a plus. Okay. Yeah, and that's... this. If we get what we want, the people that are auditioning for that job would be rewarded more so than if they took a captain's exam. The three people that will hold that spot will probably be better off in the long run being assistant commissioners if they're looking to aspire up the ladder. The only thing is, they're not taking an exam. I'm picking the person that I think. Well, no, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying if, if the only change, the only change in all the efforts is that it becomes management confidential, but not still subject to a civil service exam. And the title changes, and they're no longer in SOA. Is there any other change that would occur other than what I just described? No. no. Okay. But I think that's a benefit. I right, understand. Yeah. Councilman Rice. How many lieutenants are there currently? Ten. Okay. And all ten of those are on a list, have taken tests? Yeah, some have, uh, there are, they're not all are on the captain's list, if there's a list, yeah. How many are on the captain's list? I'm not sure. There may be five, six, so I'm not and sure. And out of that five or six, you would have to take I have pick one out of the top three. Now, if the person I'm looking at is five or six, mm -hmm. I can't reach him. I'll never reach him. It, it, it may never get to that person because the list will expire, and the, the way the openings occur in the rank, it may be five years before another spot opens up. When's the next test that's available? I don't know, because we haven't filled the spot. You know, they've taken exams, but there's no vacancy. They, they test the every two years, every two test. years we like to put out an exam. But it, it's a moot point because there's no vacancy. <coughs> but when will the list expire? I have to look at the I have list. to get that from the Civil Service Commission. They're yeah. the ones that determine the list. So in theory, the list can expire and a new round of testing will take place and there could be a different order. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. We don't know that, that expiration date right now. No. Uh, I don't know when the list but was established, but I think it's like five But once you have the list, you, you have it, and if you have an opening, you, you have to fill it. And you fill it provisionally, pending a test. So we're talking about three spots for the assistant commissioner, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Still so three captains. In theory, you, you if you're doing top three, you could get to number five. No, you can't. If you you'll take never, three spots. You'll never make vacancies. Huh? There have to be three vacancies. Yeah. Well, if you appoint three assistant commissioners, that's three right there, isn't that not? Or no, I'm so confused so. about that. If you have them on a list. You're, you're ignoring the captains who would likely fill the positions initially. Do you have to? Is that what this does? It, right it now, takes the captains? Right, right yeah. now, yeah. if there's a vacancy. We have to select from the list that exists for captains. The actual captains. Right. And if you had one vacancy, you'd have to pick out of one, two, or three. Gotcha. If you had two vacancies, you pick one. I've and only you made the next top three, you got to pick out of the next top three. I've only made one appointment in 20 years to captain. 
it was, that was based off the list. I'm saying all this captain's list over 20 years, there's only been one opening. Anything else, Councilmember Rice? Um, not for right now. Councilmember Rackman, then Councilmember Trenkridge. How many disciplinary hearings have there been in the last five years with captains and so superior yeah. officers? Well, not disciplinary command, command discipline. How many those, hearings those, those have are there here, actually been? Those are hearings, the command discipline hearings. That's, they have a hearing with the officer and, and, and negotiate a plea. Uh, how many have actually then gone on to a hearing? Uh, to an actual... To serious charges? Yes. Um, a handful. A handful being two? Because handful. most people settle for the penalty because if you, if you lose in the trial, it's double at least. That's the reason why you would not normally go ahead with a hearing. And the command discipline is, a, is not a permanent thing on your record. What we call charges and specifications is a much more serious thing. It's a permanent thing on your record. So basically what, what has happened, I guess, since 2004, we're talking about 57 times that have resulted in 48 days lost. So you're we're talking about, about seven or eight times a year, maybe? Yeah, well, And what, what, yeah. what would the range of... of violations have been? What could From they From dismissal be? to uh, uh, warned and admonished. But what, what, for what actions? Some of them are criminal. Some of them are bordering criminal. Some of them are very minor. Administrative, being late, uh, not supervising properly, things like that. Depends. I don't think, look. There's a whole gamut. I'm just, uh, There's a whole gamut. Not the number of being. times. It's the fact that a person in the same union as his subordinate has to uh, make the determination on command this I, I don't I'm, look if, if the council is uncomfortable I'm happy to bring our labor attorney in here to talk more about it but uh, okay. you know if you read the no. petition before her that's our case I'm free to agree or disagree with it but that's our case Councilman Transition yes I just want to Councilman Fatel asked about the benefits or if there is any additional benefits the, the captains are in the union now. They, their pension falls under that union, under the union contract. That's correct. So when they get taken out of the union and they go into administrative, isn't there a benefit to their pension? Or that it if, stays the same? If, if the state retirement system moves them into the employee retirements, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. So the state can still keep them in the union? Kind of the pension? state retirement system will make the determination. Uh, that had to happen with the deputy commissioner. When the deputy commissioner was promoted, <laughs> Well, what's the track record outside of our city? This has happened. What has happened in, to other cities, other communities? Have they been moved into the... Uh, I don't have any. I don't know. Well, uh, unfortunately, a lot of other cities have much better pension benefits than New Rochelle, and they don't even... Well, the state, the state pensions... Let, 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 I mean, just so everybody understands, I've tried to be as upfront on this as I can. If they got into the ERS, their pension is enhanced. I'm not debating or denying that. The cost to the city is reduced. So you know, the state pension system is going to determine where they belong, not me. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I've kind of deliberately held back and haven't, <laughs> haven't been yeah. particularly engaged in this conversation uh, up until now, but it seems to me that um, uh, there's a lot of uh, not seeing the forest for the trees and uh, this issue strikes me as larger and simpler than it appears to be uh, based on this conversation. Uh, the, the civil service law is a great thing for the most part, even though we complain about it a lot. Uh, it ensures um, a minimal level of quality and merit among people who are hired to do the public's business. It prevents abuses in the promotional process and the removal process by establishing uh, strict and clear standards uh, that organizations need to adhere to. And when it comes to the general composition of our workforce, uh, there's no question in my mind that the civil service process and the civil service law has enhanced the nature of public employment. But when you reach the management level, the, the standards and the costs and benefits shift. Because in order to hold managers accountable for their performance, you have to have the capacity to hire them or fire them uh, without being constrained 
by rules that not, may not relate to their conduct and suitability for the position in which they find themselves. And if you are telling us that the captains in our police department, or if we give them another name and call them assistant commissioners, whatever it is, are functioning in a management capacity, then holding them accountable for their performance requires flexibility in being able to hire them or fire them. Now, that seems to me the central issue, larger than any of these questions of whether it goes to PERB or whether it goes to the retirement board. Uh, that's really the issue before us. And there's a second uh, large point, uh, in my opinion. Uh, none of us, I think, among council members, has ever served in a police department, uh, either, as, uh, either in a superior capacity or as an officer. We don't really know what it's like in a PD. We don't really know the nature of the relationships between superiors and subordinates. But we have received a clear, unequivocal recommendation from our city manager, from our police commissioner, and from our deputy police commissioner. This is precisely the kind of issue on which a city council ought to be most deferential to its management team. And then if we're dissatisfied with the outcome, we hold them accountable for any kind of failure. But I think for us to be engaged in this kind of uh, exploration of minutia is it's within our legal authority to do that, but I think it's overstepping uh, a wise course of action for city council. And uh, frankly, if the recommendation was the reverse of this, that we take positions that are uh, not within civil service and put them within civil service, I'd probably be inclined to defer to you on that as well. I don't have a particular preference for how these positions are categorized. But if, if we're not going to trust the judgment of our city manager on an issue of this kind, we should be getting a new city manager. But we shouldn't be second-guessing choices of this kind. I think it's not healthy for the organization and not healthy for the relationship between the council and the staff. And that, to me, is larger than these three positions. And I felt I had to say that. I don't want to delay this vote uh, with respect. Uh, it's been on the plate long enough. We should have a vote tonight. If there aren't four votes for it, then it's off the table, and we'll move on to other things, uh, and so be it. Uh, but I don't see any particular reason to delay. Um, so uh, are there any further comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, uh, I will move item 20. Is there a second for item 20? Second by Councilmember Fertel. Mr. Clark, would you please call the roll? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Trangucci? No. Councilman Tarantino? No. Councilman Rice. I need to find out more information about this. I'm not saying I agree or disagree, but I, I'm not ready to vote on this today. That's just me personally, so I'm not always no. Councilman Hyden. Uh, for me, the benefits, uh, although I think I understand them, don't outweigh the negative feelings of the rank and file, of the superior officers themselves for the most part, and certainly of my constituents, so I vote no. Councilman Fertel. Aye. Councilwoman Rackman? No. Mayor Bramson? Aye. Uh, the motion fails by a vote of 2 to 5. Uh, and we can move on now to uh, items that were the subject of public hearings last week. Mr. Clerk, item 2.2, please. That's the proposed ordinance on the public hearing.